Hi there, welcome back. A couple of days ago I uploaded a video where I took my new template for a spin to see uh, how it sounded and if it was fireproof or not. Based on that video I already got a couple of questions like what does my template look like, what is the routing like. So in this video I just want to take you through how I set it up using Cubase 11 and Vienna Ensemble Pro 7. And before I start off I just want to mention this is a work in progress. I started it out last week, I gave it a good run with my basic first settings and now it's just a matter of tweaking it endlessly until I'm completely satisfied with it, which will probably be never. So to start off, I bought Vienna Ensemble Pro when it came out like a year and a half ago, but I didn't use it. It was just sitting there in my dock being ignored while QBiz and I were having loads of fun in the meantime. The reason I didn't use it yet was because I thought it would only be viable to use Vienna Ensemble if you were running it with all your samples on a different machine. And I obviously didn't have one. Um, but later on, I read that this was also viable on one machine. And the main benefits of it are that your sample load is now not in your DAW um, because Vienna Ensemble Pro loads all your samples and is just linked to Cubase. So if you are working with a lot of different queues in a lot of different Cubase sessions, um, this drastically reduces the time that it takes to load and save everything. So especially if you're exporting stems, this is a huge time saver. So here we are in uh, my session of Vienna Ensemble. You'll see you have different instances loaded and I have one for every orchestral group I'm using. And this is where you load your samples. So here we have all the woodwinds. I divided them up by articulation. So Cubase sends MIDI information to a particular track in Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, and that sends audio back through these outputs back into Cubase. And as you can see here, every different patch is perched, which means that when it starts up, it doesn't load all the samples yet. They only start loading samples when I use them. So I only load into my memory the samples that I actually use. So which samples do I have loaded? I basically use only Cinematic Studio series. I'm a huge fan of everything they make. Uh, so I have Cinematic, Cinematic Studio Woodwinds, Cinematic Studio Brass. For my percussion, I'm using East West Hollywood percussion. Uh, I haven't made the switch to Opus yet because I don't have the hard drive space. Play is a little bit of a problem because the purge function I'm using on all my contact libraries doesn't really work that well in play. Um, so this is something I need to move away from in the near future. Then for strings, I have Cinematic Studio strings, obviously. And for choir, I am using uh, 8DOs in Solidus Choir, which I'm a huge fan of. So that's what it looks like in Vienna Ensemble Pro. Let's now take it to Cubase. Each instance of Vienna Ensemble Pro is an instrument you can assign to a rack. And then when you connect, you can just connect it to uh, one of your instances. So here I have woodwinds and I also probably name it so I know which one I have to pick later. Also make sure that you're ticking this little box, which, is, um, which means decouple which means if you save your Cubase project, it doesn't save your Vienna Ensemble Pro setup, uh, which is very important for those reduced saving times. Now in this rack instrument, I can also assign outputs. So these correspond with the outputs in Vienna Ensemble Pro. And for each box I tick here, it'll load a new output. So if I would see here, I name them to my instrument groups that I'm using. And if I go to audio here, these are those different outputs. And after you have these outputs set up, uh, next up you load your MIDI tracks and then the MIDI information goes into Vienna Ensemble Pro, which sends the audio back to the audio tracks we just loaded. So if I now play this flute, you can see it's routed into this audio track, which comes from Vienna Ensemble. These are just the MIDI tracks I had loaded for this queue. Um, but if I go here, show all tracks, you can see there's a lot more tracks going on for each different articulation. For each MIDI track, I use an expression map uh, with which I can switch between the different articulations uh, that this one patch has. Mainly that is if I want to switch between legato on or legato off. Um, for the shorts, I can choose between different short articulations. Uh, and for strings, I can also switch between uh, con sordino, senza sordino, so mutes on or mutes off. I grouped these outputs, um, which come back from Vienna Ensemble, into instrument groups. This is personal preference. This way I can process them together if you want to have a different one for each separate instrument instead of just flutes, oboes and everything. Uh, it's up to you. It's just personal. And in the audio, there are some balancing things I did already. So my piano was a bit too loud, turned it a bit down. And I think the bass clarinet in Cinematic Studio Winds is a little bit too loud as well. So I turned it down a notch. And from here, I can route it towards my effects. So from this audio track, the signal goes four ways. 
the main signal is going into my woodwind stem. And then I have three different scents going to winds reverb one, which is a room reverb to be able to place everything in the same room. Then I send a portion to a reverb till as well to just give a little bit extra on the end. I also used one other trick for the reverb that is the Abbey Road Curve. Uh, reverb often tends to add a lot of low frequencies. And this is a trick I read about where you cut out all the low frequencies and some of the high before it hits the reverb um, to achieve a little more crisper sound. Uh, I just tried it out and I really liked it, so I kept it in there. <laughs> then I sent a portion to a parallel compression bus. For parallel compression, I'm just using the QA's basic one. You want to express the sound like too much, but then you slowly creep it in from below. Uh, so it mixes with the original sound. And it's like compression, not taking it away from the top, but adding it from below. And then finally, everything comes together in the woodwind stem, which I can then export. And if you don't need to export stems, that would be way easier. I have, for every stem, I have these three effects channels set up. Um, if you don't need to export stems, you can just route everything to the two different reverbs you're using. Then in my stems, I have the groups balanced amongst each other. Uh, this is also just a process of trial and error. And finally, all these different stems are routed through the pre-master where I use uh, some basic plugins and a limiter just in case everything, anything explodes. So if I have any other audio tracks or I'm working with dialogue or anything, um, those are going straight to my stereo out. So any processing that happens on the music doesn't happen on the other audio tracks. So the best way to see if your template is working or not is to just put it to the test. So I picked this cue from John Powell, which I really liked. The cue has a lot of different articulations, which I can use in quite a short time. So it's a good mixture of longs and shorts, uh, tremolos from loud to soft crescendos, you, you just name it, it's in there. And why did I choose John Powell? Is because I really like the way how this score for How to Train Your Dragon sounds. The woodwinds are very, very clear and very prominent as well, which is exactly how I like them. And because I knew this cue really well, I could just try and match the audio as close as I could um, to try and create this sound that I really like. Like I said, this is a work in progress. So there are already a couple of things I will be tweaking. One of the things is I need an additional legato for every instrument. Now I'm just using like flute one legato and then there's the two flutes. Um, but I have already noticed that it would be very beneficial if I have two different instruments having a legato line if I want to use flute one and flute two, for example. I want to fix some of the expression map to make them a little bit easier to use. Then I want to add a basic EQ for everything. Um, so that's also out of the way. And then it's just a matter of tweaking, 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 adjusting my reverb settings uh, and compression settings. What I did now with my reverb settings, I just went on YouTube, looked at a lot of videos, what other composers were using, tried it out. So they like it, so it must be pretty good. Let's see how, how it sounds. And then if I want, I can make additional changes to it. And in terms of the samples I've loaded, um, this is the bare bones of it. I know now that I have a full orchestra at my disposal. If for any other project I might need synths or additional percussion or whatnot, I can just load them in for that project and then save it again. So I know that I always have the same base I can build on and expand upon. And the last thing I wanna show you is the template I made in Dorico, my notation software. Uh, I thought in order to enhance my workflow of orchestrating my own pieces, I thought it would be a good thing to have a template that I could work with side by side with my new QA's template. I talked to a professional orchestrator and he gave me some tips on things to take into account, uh, like these huge time signatures or the bar numbers that would be very important once you would go to recording your works. The instrumentation is pretty basic, uh, but it matches my template quite well. So now I can start practicing my workflow going from Cubase into Dorico and making scores that look good and that are ready for recording. And that was it. I hope that was helpful and insightful. Uh, like I said, this is a work in progress. I'll be tweaking this forever. If you have any more questions about this, just drop them in the comments and I'll take a look at those. If you liked it, please show, consider subscribing as well. And from my space to yours, have a great day.